Hello friends, today we will discuss airport classification and before that I should tell you that there are two international agencies which standardize the design of airports particularly the air side like runway, taxiway and apron throughout the world and these are FAA that is Federal Aviation Administration this is the agency of United States of America and ICAO International Civil Aviation Organization that is the specialized agency of UN. These two agencies classify airport in different categories based on certain criteria. But before that let us understand what is an airport as defined by FAA. This term airport has a set definition and it is not simply an area where airplane lands it actually includes all of the facilities and infrastructure too. As per FAA, any area of land or water used or intended for landing or takeoff of aircraft, including the appurtenant area used or intended for airport buildings, facilities, as well as rights of way, together with buildings and facilities. That is the airport. This is the facility that connects passengers from ground transportation to air transportation. It is also used for storing and maintenance of aircraft. Now FAA has classified airports based on several criteria, based on takeoff and landing, based on aircraft approach speed, based on function of the airport, based on geometry design and based on aircraft wheel characteristics. There can be different types of takeoff and landing depending upon the type of aircraft and they are categorized as conventional takeoff and landing airport that is sea toll. Conventional airplanes accelerate on the runway to get sufficient lift for takeoff. During landing they use runway to reduce their speed from landing speed to turning speed. When runway length available for takeoff and landing is 1500 or more, it is called conventional takeoff and landing airports. When it is between 1000 meter to 1500 meter, it is called reduced takeoff and landing airports. There is a class of airplane like military aircrafts which can take off in a very short length of the runway and these airports are termed as short takeoff and landing airports that is STOL. And some class of aircraft like helicopters they can take off vertically and land vertically and accordingly they require very very small area of about 25 to 50 square meter and these airports are called vertical takeoff and landing airports second criteria is based on approach speed this is the classification based on approaching speed of landing aircraft approach speed is the speed at which the aircraft travels while it is in the final straight to land on a runway. This is also called reference speed or V reference. When the approach speed is less than 91 knots, now here 1 knot is 1.852 km per hour and therefore when I say 91 knots, it, it means 170 km per hour. When it is less than 91 knots, it is approach category A. When it is greater than 165, the airport classification is E or approach category is E. FAA, based on their approach speed, classify airports into two categories, utility airport and transport airports. When the takeoff weight is 12,500 pounds or less, they are called utility airports. They are small airports serving small aircrafts. And when the weight of the aircraft is more than 12,500 pounds, it is called transport airports. The next one is based on function of the airport. Now based on the function of airport, the airports can be classified as civil airports or military airports. Civil airports are those which are used for non-military operations. A civil airport can be either a national airport or international airport. A domestic airport that handles flight within the same country and these are the airports where customs and immigration facilities are not required. 
and international airports are those where the passengers are transported from one country to another country and therefore these airports have customs and immigration facilities also military airports are for use of military aircraft enabling air warfare then based on geometry in order to have uniform design of a runway located in different countries faa has classified airports based on geometry also and there are five categories of airports type a b c d and e now this, these are based on runway length that is basic runway length width of runway and maximum long term gradient which is permissible on these runways so when the runway length is more than 2100 meter and width of the runway pavement is 45 meter maximum gradient 1.5% then it is class a and similarly class e another consideration here is aircraft wheel characteristics aircraft wheels are an important component of a landing gear system they support the entire weight of the aircraft during landing take off and taxi and based on the wheel load and tire pressure faa classified airports into seven categories and these are numbered as 1 to 7 when single isolated wheel load in kg is 45000 and tire pressure 8.5 kg per centimeter square it is given code a these are the categories of the aircraft which will be served by these airports and the code 7 is given for airports which serve the aircraft with a single isolated wheel load of 2000 kg and tire pressure 2.5 kg very small aircraft which are generally used for the purpose of training icao has also given a classification and it employs an aerodrome reference code system to classify the airports it has two elements the code number 1 to 4 classify the length of runway available and the code letters a through e are based on aircraft wing span so when the runway length basic runway length is less than 800 meter it is code number 1 and when it is 1800 meter or more it is 4 similarly code letter a to e for larger aircraft it is e so when you say the aerodrome reference code is 4d it means the basic runway length available at this airport is 1800 meter or more and it serves the aircraft having wing span more than 36 meter but less than 52 meter that is the classification given by icao so friends thank you very much for watching this video if you have any question any doubt you can write in the comment box